Waiting a long time to take horses back across the Overberg. Yeah? That was the main thing. So we, it was a, an experiment of actually doing the ten-day horse trials, which we've been doing, and then thinking we could go further. And we formed this idea of doing a long eighteen-day trail to connect the two sides of. Of, a, of the Agalis biodiversity region is, is basically why we did this ride, to actually promote this area and to bring the places that we come across on horses over to people so that they will realize what a massive tourism region or destination this is. And by the end of it we would have covered close to 500 kilometers is the, the length of this. canvas where we can try and paint a new picture. But uh, what's, what I think the, the biggest thing about this part of the world for me obviously is, is that we do horse trails. And it is just, you can go back, think yourself back 200 years and you can just see that that was the way people traveled here. It was slow, you moved from place to place. And even though it seems a harsh terrain, the beaches, the, the, the fainbos, the soils, it's actually incredibly friendly on horses. We had five horses and I watched all four horses walk through a nice big clump of these proteas. Not one was broken. So horses like antelope, like zebra, like natural wildlife, they don't create damage. They naturally will move softly and in balance with the land. You know, it's only when you, when, when we put in unnatural practices that the damage comes. I think that's also another key thing about the horse is that, you know, when humans were, were using the horse as the, the instrument of development, the damage was much softer. They obviously damaged and changed things. But it, I suppose it's almost like the spear and the rifle. You know, the spear you can only get one person at a time. The rifle you could get 20 at a time all of a sudden. So, we like the horse. 